Today's webinar is on population growth uh, using aging chain models, and it's not just not just for population growth, but also for looking at changes in in groups of populations in, say, for example, a a business. So maybe for looking at uh, a staffing plan, for example. This kind of model is very useful for looking at groups that are changing as a chain through time. So for example, let's say we do have a population and you want to look at all of the, the various age groups through time. Well, <clears throat> each age group essentially has a population within it that graduates into the next group above it. And each successive group does the same through time until people die off at the end. And the 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 nice way the ni the the reason for using this kind of model is that you can look at each of those groups and and add properties to those groups individually. There might be something unique about a specific group. Um, for example, childbirth, or, um, or maybe the death rate or survival rate is changing for each of the groups. Um, maybe you want to separate males from females. Um, a lot of different uh, reasons to to use this kind of approach. Alternatively, you could just apply or assume a, a, an average uh, growth rate over the entire population and just do a simple simple growth rate. But this uh, this aging chain method allows you to to add a lot more uh, detail into into the um, the simulation of the growth projection. So. What I thought I would do is start off with a working example or two and then go into the details of how to actually build the aging chain in GoldSim. So the model that we're looking at now, and by the way, I am sharing my screen, so you should see a, a model that says population growth model aging chain at the top. If you do not, please let me know. You can notify me by clicking on the hand button on your dashboard of your GoToWebinar. So what this model does is it takes an initial population of um, uh, of an area of uh, with, with with numbers for each age group between age uh, essentially age zero to one hundred, and it's separated them by males and females. Notice the units here. It says on the first row two 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 zero purse. That's for a person, obviously. That is a gold sim unit. It's built into gold sim now. And it's not a uh, unit of measurement, obviously, but it but it um, it is known as a as a uh, as an item or a quantity of of uh, individual items. Um, you, you you can add you can add um, person type units together but um, but you you can't. Um, it, it's it's looked at as a unit that that is essentially dimensionless. So if we go up here to to our units, let me go up to our units database here and look at items. So within the items category here, um, so it really doesn't have any you know measurement associated with it. So you could actually add an, a number to a one person that doesn't have any units. So you could add one plus one person and you'd get two. So you do have to be a little bit careful when you're dealing with, with this type of unit because of that, because of that fact. But it does, um, it, it does lend itself well to looking at lots more people if you wanted to say, I want to see my, my results in a thousand people or millions of people. Then you just type in the, the display unit K P E R S or M P E R S, and Goldson will do the, the conversion for you there. So I guess just keep in mind that that the purse unit or any item unit is a little bit different than than most of our other units that have measure uh, quantities associated with them. Okay, so what you can do with this model is you can select from various scenarios. In here we have three already built in. One says there are more female newborns. 
than male newborns, and that's just a, using using the slider right here. So you can just say what what fraction of newborns are female or male, and, and the only reason this was put in here was just to kind of show how you get a different result. It's not it's not necessarily realistic. We can also look at equal female to male ratio, or I guess close to equal. Maybe I should move that. There we go. <clears throat> And finally, more male newborns to, to female newborns. And now when we look at the population, now you can see that there are differences in, in the way that the total population grows over time, depending on that one input that we, that we have there. So in addition to the, the, starting initial, uh, the starting population, we can edit survival rates. And these numbers were, were taken from, from some real data, from census data in a particular city, um, but the one, uh, this, this value, one minus this value is the, is essentially the death rate, the annual death rate for those, for that age group. And then we have fertility rates here, and these obviously apply just to the, um, just to the female side, and it goes by, by year, and then it's changing through time into the future. And with those numbers, then we can apply we can apply those fertility rates to just a certain section or just certain um, um, groups within the whole set of groups to to um, calculate this population projection. Something else that you can do with this type of model is a staffing plan for a business. So let's say, for example, that you have a series of pay grades within your within your business. Um, in, this, in this example, there are apprentices and journeymen, and then after that, retirees. But before you can get to the apprentice apprenticeship, you need to go through a hiring process. And so what this model does is it essentially walks through all of those, um, all of those steps. If we go into the acquire apprentices container, and there are steps here where we have applicants that are entering into the system. And then they go through an interviewing process, and during this process there are a series of screenings that go on. And so we're just using splitters to say, okay, these people that are coming in, we're going to split some off. Some of them don't make it. Then we finally get to the end here, and these are people that made it through the screening and are ready for hire. So then we come back up to the main level of the model, and from the from the hiring, we come into the um, this, the stages of apprenticeship, and in in this model, there are four stages. What this means is it, there there are four years, so you you have to be an apprentice for four years. So there are some people that are first year apprentice, there are some people that are second year apprentice, all the way to four. And in Goldsim, you can you can simulate this, which in, in a way that I'll be showing you in a minute in a minute here. But what this allows you to do is view the population of, of employees within each of those apprentice groups. Then you can add all of them up and see the total, which is this, this magenta line here. Now, the people that come off of this stage four are then going into the journeyman category, so which is our next stage here. And in here now, there are actually 20 stages but they're all grouped into a vector integrator. So I, I could have done this two ways. I could have added 20 individual integrator elements and pushed the journeyman through each stage, or I could just lump them all into a vector and it all happens internally um, inside that vector. So it would produce the same result. From this point now, we can see who's coming off the end to calculate who the retirees are. And we can look at a plot like this that shows us these are the entire employees within the company. And then we can also look at um, things like a different group, at different stages. And this is not showing all the stages. It's just showing stage 1, 5, 10, 15, and 20. Um, through time, those are the different stages as we're moving along. And you can see that the difference between um, uh, the, these are essentially that we're shifting through time.
So someone will be in one group and then later on they'll show up in the next group. Okay, so another thing you can do here is add attrition rates or, or losses similar to the, to the death rate in the population growth model. So we could put in here some sort of loss rate or layoff rate or, or something like that into this model too. And, and, and those, those values might be spread differently through the different stages of employment. And that's the nice thing about having an agent chain model is you can apply different rates at different points throughout the, um, throughout the system. Okay, so so with this with this kind of model, you can do things like um, you can look at you know the different major groups within the organization as they're growing through time. So in this case, we're seeing that <clears throat> we're having a surge of apprentices uh, toward the the second half of the decade, which is going to affect our our next um, generation of journeymen after the next, it, within the next decade. So we could simulate this out further and see what the effect would be. Okay, so, so that, that's the kind of thing you can do with an agent chain model. So let's go ahead now and, and start building one. So I'm just going to start with a, with a blank model here. And um, I practiced this once last night, we'll hope that it Hope that it goes well. So, bear with me here as I as I work through this. Um, let's assume that we have some data that's showing here in this spreadsheet. What we want is, well, first we have an initial population within each group, and let, let's let's talk about these groups. So, let's assume that we have we're we're part of an organization that has um, five engineer pay pay scale or pay gradations within the organization. And let's just assume for simplicity that each of those lasts for one year. So an employee that, that starts as engineer one would, would graduate to engineer two after the first year. Now, of course, we don't have to make those, sim those simplifications in a real model, um, but just for today, I'm going to be doing it this way. So we need an initial condition. At the beginning of the simulation, we have to make some assumption about what what the um, or I guess this is something we would know it wouldn't be an assumption but we would know how many people are currently within each group and so this is the data for that we might also want to make an assumption about about separations within the within the organization um, I'm just assuming 10% across the board so so each year 10% of the people within each group will will separate from the company is what this is saying now obviously I could change this to be different numbers for each of the groups and they could also be changing through time. They could also be stochastic. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of options of how we could do this. Um, there's also something you have to be careful about when you're working with small numbers like this. If I multiply you know, 5 by, by 10 percent then I won't get a whole person. Um, you know, when we're dealing with unit type item or I, sorry, item type units like this we we need to be careful about how we're showing showing integers versus decimal numbers so I have a round function that I'll be building in there to to represent just whole whole, whole number of people um, it's just I guess a matter of preference though w once your numbers become much larger it probably doesn't matter as much okay and then I also want to add a rate of hiring and and for simplicity for now I'm just going to assume that everybody that we hire is always pushed into the front end into the engineer one category and this table over here is is a time series so we're going to do a simulation that runs for 10 years and on each year we'll have an annual number of new hires that we're adding to the system, a, a new engineer one group hires. And we may or may not do a hiring every single year, but these are the numbers that represent those, those new hires. Okay, so I'll move this over to the side and I'll put Goldsim next to it. I'm, I'm, I closed the browser there so I have more space and now I will start entering this data.
And notice when I open this time series, the time unit by default is day. And that's because of the way my simulation is currently set up by default. So I just opened up Gold Sim, and by default, it's the, the time step is one day, and the, and the display time step is one day. So let's go ahead and change that now before I start adding data to this. Um, in the simulation settings now, I want this to run for 10 years. And it's a lapse time model, so that means each year has the same exact length. It, what it does is it says this is an average year length that's 365.25 days long. Same with months. Months in this type of model are 30.4375 days long. Okay, and I want my, my time step to be one year. Okay, so notice that now, now that I've already created this time series, it's still set to a day, but I can always change this to year. Okay, so I paste in those values, and that's ready to go. Put in my attrition rate. Negative 10. And now I'm going to add my groups, engineer 1 through 5. So I'll go up here to my array label sets, and I'll add a new set, and I could either just do an indexed or a named, um, either way, because these are numbered. Index would be easiest. I could just do an index between 1 and 5, like so. Or I could put names. Maybe I'll do it that way this time. And um, let's see. I'll just call it, I'll just call it group. Copy and paste, always easier. Notice the, the line styles here. This box here that says vary lines is checked. Since I only have five, there's no reason to vary the line style, just the color's fine. So I'll hit reapply and now just the colors are different. Oh, I can't have spaces. Okay, so I have my groups, or my group uh, array label set. Now I can create my data. Vector. Okay. Notice when I when I paste the values in, they're just numbers. But when I come back and look, when I close that table and come back to it, Goldson has appended the unit to each of those values. By the way, if you have questions during this, please feel free to um, to notify me with the the GoToMeeting dashboard. You can click on the the, the raise your hand button, and and then type in a question if you wish. All right, so now we have all of our, our data. We're ready to go. So one way to do this is, let me ban this now, is with, um, with, we could use reservoirs if we want to, to represent each of the groups. So we could come in here, and we could also use integrators, um, which, is, which is where I, I plan to end up. But, but reservoirs will work just fine, too. So what we can do is say, well, I want my new hires to come in to this first reservoir. So we'll put that here. But notice it needs one over time. Well, actually, it needs persons over time or persons per year. So I need to say, well, there's that many. This is an annual amount. And I'll say that many people divided by one year. And now you have to be careful when you're using this type of conventionality in, in your model if you have a, if you have a calendar-based simulation. This, this one YR will refer to a, a, an average year length, which may not be what you want in a calendar simulation. So just keep that in mind. And the withdrawal rate is going to be, at the end of the year, the amount that's in here. 
right? So this first reservoir, this represents engineers, engineer ones, right? Engineer one. And I'll call this um, employees in cohort group, I'll say. All right. So this represents the engineers, the staff that are currently engineer one pay, pay scale. And we're going to be hiring this many people that are, according to this time series, every year as an addition rate. The withdrawal rate is on an annual basis. The people that are inside of here will be removed. So we can access the people inside here by just naming, giving it the same name as the element ID. <coughs> and interestingly, this, this name is not known yet because we haven't submitted the changes to this element. So let me just delete this and say OK. Come back and, and, and now Goldsim knows what engineer one is. So I can just start typing it. There it is and it needs a time again associated or it needs to convert that to a rate. And so once a year we're going to remove the amount of engineers that are inside of this category and they're going to move into the next category. So I can just copy and paste this over to the next one. So, <clears throat> so what's the addition rate into the second group, do you think? It's not new hires, right? Those are only going in on the front end, on the first group. So the addition rate into the engineer two group is going to be the withdrawal rate from engineer one group. So if I, if I type a, a dot after engineer one, I can access the multiple outputs available from that first reservoir. And I want this, the second one, withdrawal rate. And now you can see that there's an influence line from engineer one to engineer two. And then I want to remove whatever is in this group each year so that it can, I can push that to the following group. So it's engineer two divided by a year. And we can just follow this process, keep going with these reservoirs. And, and this is fine. Um, and, oh, by the way, I forgot the initial population. So initial population, you know, we would do this. And um, we want to say engineer one. Right, we'd, we'd index that, that initial population table, grab the first row. Um, we'd also, we also want an attenuation rate, so we'd add that to our withdrawal. And um, which also means, by the way, if we have an attenuation rate, that if I add something to the withdrawal here, then we need to make sure that whatever's coming into engineer two does not include that, with, that withdrawal rate. So um, let's go ahead and, and, and stop here and go to the integrator method with a, a different approach that makes it a little bit easier in this way. But, but this is how you would continue forward using this, this approach. So I'm going to delete these out and start over. Let's, let's add um, an event here. And, and the reason I want to add an event is just, it, it kind of globalizes the process of moving employees into the next group. Like I said, you might not want to move employees always on, on, a, on each year, but you might want to do it at specific intervals that are specified by the model or by you. Um, so I'm going to say advance event here. And this, this event advances employees. Advances employees. OK, and this will happen when the year changes the elapsed year, because we're in elapsed time simulation. And I'm going to add another precedent here that we don't trigger at the very beginning of the simulation, which would be the case unless I type this in. So I want to skip the very first trigger at the beginning of the simulation. I don't want to do a new hire right when it starts, because I already have people in my different groups. I only want to start the hiring process on the next year. 
or the I guess the movement of employees at the at the change of the first year after the first year has elapsed. Now I'll start um, adding integrator elements to represent each of the groups. Okay, I'm going to stop here and add a discrete change, and I'll show you why in a second. So this discrete change is going to push new hires into the first group, and that word is very important, push. This is, this is a fairly new type of instruction that's available in a discrete change, and also as an output from an integrator. Those of you familiar with GoldSim know that there are there is an instruction input field or input drop list in a in a discrete change that lets you either add or replace. Add just adds the amount that's this value here. For example, in an integrator, we just add that amount every time it triggers. Or you could have it replace, which means that whatever was in the integrator would then be replaced with this value every time it triggers. Well, there's a new one here called push. And what this will do is it will push whatever value this is into the integrator and then cause whatever was in the integrator to be pushed out the other end. So we don't have to, um, we don't have to configure the, this element to, to remove what was in it like we were doing earlier with the, um, with the reservoir. So what I'm going to say here is new hires added and I'll just reference the time series and then I'm going to trigger this on event on this advance event so every time this triggers we will then push new hires into the first category and the way we push them in is simply just to reference the discrete change here <clears throat> and because that is a push type of uh, signal coming into this integrator, it will cause, it will give us the ability actually to to push um, whatever is currently sitting in this integrator out to the other end. But we need to make sure that we click on this more button and select provide a pushed out discrete change. The only reason for this is if I if I have another integrator out next to this that I need to receive the outgoing employees, which I do. I do have that case, so I'm going to check that. And now I can go ahead and move on to the next one. I don't have new hires added in there, but I do have, if I insert link here, then you can see it in the browser, there's another output on the engineer one called pushed out. So engineer one pushed out will then come into there. Go to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Okay, so let's just change these. Three, two, let's see, this one is number four. This is coming out of three. Let's see, did I do three right? Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going over here to number five. Nope, four, there we go. Okay, so now we have the, the, um, the, the people moving through each of those groups. And then we can come over here on the final end, and I'm just going to say retirees, even though that doesn't make sense with only five groups lasting for five years, but let's just say that for now. And this would just be engineer five dot pushed out that would go into the retirees. So now we have the population going through each of these groups through time, and we should be able to um, plot those. I'm just going to add a little expression here that that groups all of these into a vector. So I'm going to create a, uh, an element that is of a type vector of group. 
and I'll call this um, population vector and then I'll do a vector constructor and just put each of these in. Sort of cumbersome here. But don't worry, we'll we'll get I'll also show you the vector style here so we don't have to do all of this stuff. Um, it, it might seem that, like this is a cumbersome way to do this kind of model, but just keep in mind that it does give you a little bit more visual aspect to what's going on. Um, you you can you can more easily work with individual groups. Say say there's something unique going on about engineer three scale here. Well, we could we could we could provide we could add expressions and 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 logic to to, to change something going on here, or you could have a feedback. From, from one group to another and, and visualize that a little bit better. Um, combining these all into one vector, which I'll show you later, is useful um, in that it, it makes it more compact and easier to expand the vector, like I could add groups easily to it. Um, but at the same time, it's all kind of more black box. So. We, you can weigh the pros and cons yourself. Um, all right, so now I can add another expression here that's the total population in the organization. So it's the it's the sum v of the total population or the population vector. It's just sum v function on that. Okay. So now I can add a time history result that looks at the new hires, it looks at the population vector, and it looks at the total population. I'm going to remove the label for the population vector because it already has the each item labeled. And I'll just pretty this up a little bit. I think it's obvious that we're looking at population. So I can remove that label. Population, and I'll change it from history to projection. All right. Now if I run the model, I get something like this. Um, so the total is shown there. I'm going to change the color of the total to black. And let's see, red's already used. so. For the people coming in, I'll use gray dash, maybe. OK. So <clears throat> um, it's looking kind of jagged, because we, that's how we kind of hired people. Like some years, we didn't hire any. And, and so there are, there are years in which there aren't any people in some of the groups. But what's happening here is if you look at engineer one in red compared to engineer to green, you see that there's just one year delay. So there's there's a little over 20 people in the first year, and they all get shifted over to the next. The best way to look at this is in a table. So if we're looking at this, you see that we hire on the first year 23 new hires. They all get pushed right into engineer one group immediately. Well, they're sitting there for a year. At the end of the year, they go down into engineer two, and then three, and then four, et cetera. And then we add up all of these in the, in the last column. All right, let's add our initial population numbers. Initial population. I should have put these in at the beginning, so I didn't have to do this. But um, I'm just going to copy and paste that. Okay, run the model, and now you can see that we have an initial state here on the first row, these numbers here, and then if we look at engineer one that started out on the first year, 
with 20 people in there. Then we go to engineer two, and that 20 moved down to the next row. And you can just follow these all down. Um, the plot looks like this. Okay, so now let's add losses. <clears throat> By the way, I didn't really explain um, yet how these are pushing. So, so what we do is because we have specified a push type instruction here, it causes the amount the 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 amount that's in this first integrator to be pushed out. And because this is a push out instruction moving to the second integrator, it also causes this one to do the same. And then it just keeps moving through, ripples through the entire chain here. And we've essentially told all of these to push everything, uh, their contents out to the next one up. And we've done it very simply with just that one little checkbox there, not having to actually instruct each of these to be removing their contents, which is nice. Okay, so now we want our attrition rates to be added. So to do that, then we'll, let's see, what's the best way? I think I'll move it up here. Um, so this is a, a, an annual percent. Now, it, it doesn't say percent per year, but what we'll, what we'll do then is we'll need to put the gear into the equation at some point. And I'm just going to apply the attrition rate as, as that, as a rate. Um, now, you need to be careful here. If I have time steps that are shorter than a year, then, then this rate will still apply during the year. Um, there's a chance that you may rather apply these d at discrete intervals. Um, which would mean you'd want to use a discrete change to do this. But either way, it can be done. So I'm just going to use a rate. So I have the annual attrition rate, and I multiply that by the amount that's, that's in this category currently, and then I divide it by one year. Okay, pretty simple, but again, we run into this problem of, of, um, of decimal values, which doesn't make a lot of sense when you're dealing with small numbers of people. So it might be better to round this. And if we do round it, this is all fine, um, except for this year unit, which you'll see in a second here. It says I can't round um, values that have units. So it, it, it's OK with the person unit, because that's not a, like I said before, it's not a quantity. It's just an item. So what we could do is just put the end parenthesis here. And we're still dividing by, by, um, by one by one year, and um, because we're in a lapse time model, this one year would not affect or would not cause a, a decimal number to be produced. Okay, so now I think that's the actually let me let me run this to make sure I'm going on the right track here. So if we look at engineer one. They start out with 20. In the next group, they only receive 18 of the 20. And that's what I would expect. So it looks like it's working correctly. So now I'm going back in, and I'm going to um, copy that expression and put that into each successive group here, just changing the, the engineer name there. So it applies to the right, the right group. Five. Okay, we run the model. And now we can look at each change, each um, graduation from each uh, cohort group and see that they are the numbers are reduced by ten percent, but it's rounded. So in some cases, um, it may not be exactly 10%, but we just want to reduce it, or we want to round it to the nearest person. So 33 went to 30, for example. The plot looks like this. OK, so another thing we can do is represent this exact same process with a vector. So I'm just going to change this to engineers plural, and I'll change this to a vector of groups. By the way, this is this has been sort of um, bothering me. 
I would rather this name be called groups because these are these are individual groups. There we go. Okay. Um, all right. So the initial is just the vector. So I can just do that. That's easy. The vector is nice. You know, if if you're adding and subtracting a lot of um, if you're adding and subtra subtracting groups, then that all gets replicated through without you having to change anything. Otherwise, I'd have to, you know, add a new integrator, take one out, readjust things. So this is more eloquent here, but again, it's it's more of a black box. Um, okay, what was I doing here? Oh yeah, engineers. And this this one part we'll have to change a little bit here. So instead of just um, pushing in one value, we have to push in a vector, but because it's because it's the push type output, it really only adds it to the first item of the vector. So um, just because I'm specifying a vector of groups here doesn't mean I'm pushing this value into every group. Okay, and, that, and that's all because of this instruction called push. So that means it will just push it to the first item of the vector. So that, this is important, this part. So um, if, if you've been dozing off, now's the time to wake up and listen. You, you, want, you want to make sure you understand that the instruction of push in a discrete change, even though this is a vector, pushes this value to just the first item of the integrator that it's connected to. Oh, and I'm going to, I'm just going to call this higher than added to, just to differentiate it from the other one. Okay, so now I can add an, an expression similar to the other total population expression. Total population two. Engineers. And now is the time of reckoning to see if what I did is correct. Hopefully that, that works out the same way. New hires. Um, what did I call it? Engineers and total population two. Okay, let's hope for the best. Run the model, and then it looks the same. But let's let's make sure they're the same by comparing these two total populations. So I'm just going to create another another time series chart here to compare those two. So total population and total population two. And sure enough, they're, they're on top of each other. So they, they did exactly the same thing, but all with just this one, this one element here instead of five. So this is how you build an aging chain model in GoldSim. Like I said, you could, you could use another approach. You could use um, reservoirs. In fact, you could even use delay, uh, material delay elements. But with the integrator, you have this this nice feature of the push instruction from a discrete change that, that just kind of cleans things up, makes things a lot easier to deal with. It automatically pushes everyone into the next group. So it's definitely something to, to consider um, in your, in your uh, aging chain modeling in GoldSim. So that's the end of the presentation. I hope this was useful, and I am happy to take any any questions that you might have, but before I end, I just want to mention real quick our our library. So we've 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 updated our library on our on our website. If you go to our website when you first go in, you'll be taken to this page. Click on the library link at the top, and you'll see a new look here. Um, it's categorized at the top by by models, knowledge base, which are just articles essentially ask answering you know, frequently asked questions kind of things um, also the image library which contains some icons and also our logos so in the model library if you click on that link you can type in the search field here at the bottom or you can browse you can browse by category but if you don't know exactly where to browse to you can just type in a search for example population and we could look at um, one of these models, well, the one that we actually looked at is called the Agent Chain Model. Click on that link, and this is the model that we were looking at. You can download it and run it yourself. 
So anyway, I hope that was useful for you. Um, thanks, thanks a lot for joining, and I will now be taking questions.